Hi everyone, this is Sean. Press the like button. If you like this video, subscribe. If you're not subscribed, and if you've been subscribed, thank you so much for your loyalty. Thank you for being one of the over 2,000 subscribers on this channel. I really appreciate you guys. So this is take four or five <sighs> on this video. And I'm gonna just, I'm gonna just give it a try, guys. I, I I've been recording, um, deleting, recording again, and I, I'm I'm gonna just <laughs> I'm gonna just try my best on this video here, and it, it's a challenging question. So we're we're gonna talk about video uh, security, security guard on demand. What it is, and is this something that is is feasible? This question is a question from David from the Security Guard Command channel. And he asked me this question about six months ago. It took me this long to actually put out a video because David always asks difficult questions. And he does his due diligence. Before he asks you a question, he, he'll research the answer. By the way, you guys, David is fully capable of of addressing this topic on his own channel, but I think he just wants to hear from me. So let's talk about whether or not this is feasible. Let's talk about if this is something that that we ought to be doing out there and let's talk about what it is. So let's talk about what it is first. The theory behind security guard on demand is that when there's a situation at your place of business, your residence, your private property, you want to be able to contact somebody for help. You don't want to just deal with the situation on your own because maybe you don't have the resources. Maybe you don't have the skill set. Maybe you just want to you just want to divert liability in into somebody else. So, ideally, when there's a situation, you get your cell phone or a smart app, and you go to the app, and you click a button, and you're immediately connected to a security dispatcher. You advise them what the issue is. Uh, maybe there's a green button or red button that you press, and that security officer um, will start becoming, will start heading this way, heading towards your residence, your place of business. They'll already be in, in route, and then they could deal with the situation. That's what security on de on demand is. Let's talk about. Let's first talk about legality. Now, this is not professional advice, not legal advice. Anything they provide in this video shall never, ever be considered to be legal or professional advice. Do your own due diligence. But what I'll tell you this: in most states, in order to own a private security company, you need to have a private patrol operator license or a security agency license. If you're an employee, or if you, if, you, if you have a guard force, they need to have guard registration, guard cards, and they need to work under your company license. Um, you normally cannot, depending on where you are, you normally cannot be a, be a contract private security officer in most situations. You could be a contract private security company or private security agency owner or private patrol operator, but you, you cannot just, you can't be the, be the, the contractor you have to you have to work under somebody um, if you want to operate throughout different states and even if you advertise security on demand services you need to have a private patrol operator license in each state that you operate so if this app that you create is accessible in all in it will just say in 30 states or 40 states um, California I'll tell you that requires you to have a private patrol operator license when you advertise private security services. I don't know what the laws are in each state, but I think that they're very similar and I'm looking forward to a discussion on this. Um, se second, I think that your operating costs are, are gonna eat you up. And, and, and here's why. You have to have somebody available within a reasonable distance. Having somebody that is capable of responding within maybe 10 minutes, maybe 30 minutes, an hour, you're gonna to have to have a vehicle that's into place. You're gonna to have to have that manpower, that employee, um, equipment. And we know that operating expenses for security companies are rather high. 
Are you going to bring in enough revenue for this on-demand services that are going to justify all of, all of these expenses? Guys, you have your engines running, that's gas. You have them idling, that's gas. These cars need, they need tune-ups. Um, if you follow... If you follow Commander Hall at the Commander Hall Security Channel, one of my favorite channels to, to watch, um, he's constantly putting money out there to repair his patrol cars. Th that's an expense that you're going to have to have to consider. This, this idea would work. And that's considering that some of these conditions are met. So if you already have a patrol route, Maybe on one of your shifts, you have 10 or 20 different properties that you go to anyways. And some, because when you patrol these properties, it, if you manage your properties right, um, you'll normally have between between 10 minutes and sometimes 40 minutes um, between the time you have to go from one property to another. Maybe that's an eight hour shift or, or a 10 hour shift. There, there's, there's some downtown. There, if you manage your properties right, there should be some downtime. And you want downtime just in case there's some type of critical incident that, that requires your response. Uh, so if you have more than, more than normal, more than usual amount of downtime, um, you could, this app would work for you because you're already on the road. It would definitely work for you. Now, another con about this program is that you're competing with law enforcement, okay? And you guys know that I, I work in law enforcement. This has nothing to do with, with ego. But, and if it does, you, you, you let me know. I'm always, I'm always open ears. But if I have a situation at my house, if I have a prowler, um, why am I going to call security? Like, why am I going to pay for security services if I could just call 911? Or I could call a biz line to a law enforcement agency and they'll respond. And most of, almost every single time, it's free service. I get free detectives. I get free extra patrol, although it, that's haphazard. Um, but I get free services because I contribute to the tax basis. Actually, you don't even have to contribute to the tax basis. You get free law enforcement services. Um, and I also get the authority of law enforcement. For example, as a law enforcement officer, you can make you can make arrest um, based on probable cause, even if you did not observe the crime occur, depending on what crime it is, obviously. Um, and then you have the ability to call 20 or 50 other law enforcement officers if you need help. That's guys, that's free service. If I have a hostage situation on my mall property, I don't have to use our security force to attempt a rescue, I could simply call the 911 number and within a reasonable time, maybe five or six hours, depending on where you're at, I can get a, a SWAT team with the hostage negotiator on my property for free. Okay, Fire departments usually will send you a bill for the service, but I don't know of a lot of law enforcement agencies that send you a bill. Maybe if you're disturbing the peace with a loud party, um, sometimes you'll get a bill from the law enforcement agency. But I, you're, you're not going to get a bill <laughs> for the most part. And I get all those wonderful resources for free. So what I'm saying is this. With this Security Guard on Demand app, you're competing with law enforcement. Now, if you intend on only doing security on demand, you're not having a patrol route, guys, it's, it, you're going to have to have a subscription service where they pay monthly. I think that's the only way that you're going to be able to survive. Because these incidents, they happen, but the chances of somebody calling you aren't too great, obviously depending on what post you're located at or what neighborhood you're in. Um, I, and, I, and I'm thinking I'm thinking out loud right now. I I just I just don't see I just don't see how you're able to survive with uh, with security on demand if you're if, if you're a private security company owner that's i mean you're just depending on on those calls for service coming in why not design a patrol route and this is my suggestion to you why not just design a patrol route and charge extra if you have to return to that property because a client or um 
or a resident on the property or, or a tenant, they call. You're, per, you're probably better off doing that. Now, on the, other, on the other hand, we have a lot of creative people here like David. I think that it, it might be worth you guys' time to create your own app, kind of like an Uber, create your own security on-demand app. If you're the creator of this app and you do so with consultation with a licensed attorney that can navigate through different state laws, um, this is perfect, you guys. This is basically the, the Uber of this century. Um, there's a lot of smart thinkers out there. I think this is something to definitely, definitely consider. If now let let me talk about how this would affect you as a as an employee. Remember, you can't take this type of work on this on demand services unless you have your own security company, generally speaking, or you work under an employer who has a, a private security agency license or a private patrol operator license. That's the only way that it work, and. This would, unless you're retired, you already have in, income coming in from, from different sources. Uh, those of you who are in the military, some of you are 100% disabled, but you're still able to do some security work. It would probably work for you. The point of the matter is you have to be comfortable with your standard of living the way it is right now without really much revenue source or income sources. You really cannot depend on this on-demand services as a way to make a living. It's 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 gonna be it's it's gonna be tough. So guys, I'm not saying that this is not gonna work out. This security on demand, I think it's gonna be the future of security. But it's just a matter of who wants to get there first. Who wants to fork out thousands of dollars on app development? You guys, some apps take it. it they take over a hundred thousand dollars to develop. I did some research on app development because I know nothing about app development. I know some of you do, but it can literally take hundreds of thousands of dollars to create an app like this. And it's not just the app that's expensive. You have to create the legal structure. That means consulting with an attorney. Make sure what you're doing is actually illegal. Okay? Um, this, this, is the, this, this, is jet, this is definitely the, the future. What I would like to see though um, is maybe a drone. And now this is talking about in the too much into the future maybe but imagine you you press a button um, a drone that is that is controlled by a private security officer remotely they fly over it with this drone to your house to your residence to your property they observe the situation and then they can report the situation to law enforcement now that guys um i i see it feasible but remember there there's a this is why you need to have the legal intro, in, infrastructure. There's a licensing involved. You need you need a license to do something like that. Um, you can't just freely have a drone hovering over residential areas whenever you want for for profit. Um, there's there, there's going to be some regulations, and these regulations are way beyond my expertise. But that's that's going to be the future. This is this is definitely the future of security. Let me know what you guys' thoughts are on security on demand. Is this something that you'd be interested in? Do you think maybe you'll develop an app or a strong network? Let me know what you guys' thoughts are. Looking forward to the discussion. Take care.